it's done. I'm good. I'm rocking the whole one glove thing. Uh, I'm going to put the mask on, get this out of here, and uh, neutralize it with water. It's been a day and a half now, and uh, I want to get this, this guitar built. So here we go. This ammonia uh, has become denatured. It's nowhere near as strong as it was originally, which is why I've left it for so long, and why I can manipulate it and open boxes that's got the ammonia in it. The fumes aren't anywhere near as bad. Uh, the first time I opened this pot it nearly melted my eyeballs. This is much weaker stuff now. Onwards. I really want to see what this looks like. So the mask comes on and the voiceover guy comes out. That looks like some sort of nerve gas now. So water both neutralizes and gets rid of gunk buildup. What we've actually got here is uh, I think I might have put too much on of the salt and mustard etc. And uh, that's actually protected the copper from uh, the reaction, although really uh, the effect is still stunning just not quite as blue as I was expecting I just judged the one glove thing <laughs> yes you did so I'm very gently rubbing off stuff and it took a lot longer than that <laughs> bring it on Spacey. Would you look at that? So, so here we go. I'm incredibly happy. It's uh, got something that I haven't seen before, actually, which is these pinks and, and purples and blues and things in there. This is predominantly the fault of the mustard. So the, the blacks and the browns and the sort of... I, I'm going to say copper colours. Uh, that's mustard. And then the little flashes of blue are salt. If I had more salt, well, it is what it is. This is how these things come out. They're, they're all different and uh, you can adjust it little bits. But uh, I'm very, very happy. This is going to look stunning. Uh, it almost looks a little bit like abalone and uh, sort of pearly natural colours. I love it. Now, an interesting side effect is on the back, on the back you get this sort of effect from where it was sitting on, uh, well that's not in the right frame, let's frame it properly, there we go. Uh, you get this fantastic effect which is uh, sitting on wet cling film and uh, I also love that. I'm going to do this on, on something at some point. And there we have it. So, copper uh, with a mustard and salt patterner. No, mustard and salt and ammonia patterner. Uh, health and safety. Wear goggles. I forgot half the time. Uh, I'm not too worried because this is such a weak solution of ammonia. But uh, yeah, goggles, masks, outside, air. Don't be silly like me. It's, I'm so happy with this. Um, yeah, there we go. Now, onto the guitar body. It has been a day and a half, two days, since uh, the last coat of oil went on this. And I'm back and I'm gonna finish building this instrument now. Uh, you don't have to use wax on, on the Crimson Guitar Finishing Oil, but I do like the effect that you get from a good microcrystalline wax. The whole time I've been talking, I've been tempted to sniff this. I love that smell. I don't know why. Is it a problem? Maybe. Uh, at the moment, I'm using Renaissance Microcrystalline Wax. We are actually uh, 
planning on developing our own version coming up. So uh, yeah, that'll be fun. Uh, I'll make it smell like lemon because guitarists like lemon scented things. Or mint choc chip. I think mint choc chip. Anyway, okay. Now you could stick your rag I'm using paper tissue, which uh, has a silica content and therefore buffs and polishes. You could just put this in your wax and rub it on and be done with it. Uh, that does work, although with some harder waxes like uh, uh, Caranuba or a mix of beeswax and Caranuba, etc., 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 it's really hard work and you don't necessarily get the result you want. If you use fire and heat, though, you can get a much better result. And uh, what I'm going to do is warm up my tissue, put it in the wax, and then it basically spreads and buffs much quicker and easier. It's a little loud, a little annoying, but uh, the results are good. So I'm going across the grain here, which is pushing the wax into the grain uh, to make sure that I've got full, complete coverage, and then uh, buffing and rubbing every which way to sort of spread it and buff it and rub it, because, you know, buffing and rubbing is necessary and fun at this point. Anyway, this process is one of the ones that you shouldn't really rush. In fact, as a general rule, if you think you've spent enough time on a finish, you probably want to go back and, and double that. That was fun. I wonder what I'm breathing in now. That's lovely. It feels so good. Very tactile. <laughs> okay. Similar process on the neck next. Is there a camera there? And with this final application, the neck is starting to look uh, as I'd hoped it would. And uh, this, again, this is the sort of the last 5% of work. And uh, uh, it, with finishing in particular, it's absolutely essential you put the time in. It's the first thing that the, the customer, in our case, sees. What are you laughing at? That was a little bit weird. Um gazing directly into your eyes. No. <laughs> Long day. I've decided to give up procrastinating, but um, I haven't quite got around to it yet. Bad joke, Ben. Should I do the frets that I don't want to do? <sighs> or put the scratch plate and hardware on the body that I do want to do? Well, I don't know. Unfortunately, the answer is the frets. Isn't it really? Let's be realistic. <sighs> My world is tinged with sadness. So we mask off the fretboard using a leveling file and then a leveling beam, and then a leveling file. I kind of feel like I should be rapping now or something. 
fret rockers are absolutely essential. And back to the leveling beams to just polish the tops off. Crowning. I wish I could do this job this fast in real life. And now the polishing commences. Various grits of paper wrapped around my fingers. And fret rubbers. And fret rubbers. And then some more fret rubbers. Wasn't quite so happy with the sides of the frets, so back in with some paper. Wrapped around a credit card works really well. Auto saw. That looked like a leveling file, but it's a leveling file that had leather on the bottom that I use as a strop to polish frets. Fretboard cleaner and restoratives. And here we go. Fun times. Focus! Focus! Oh. Pretty. Wait, there's strings on there. When did that happen? Okay. That hole's a little loose. So these are Goto open back tuners. Uh, we have been using these on our Artist Series guitars in the Raw Series. And they're fantastic tuners. They're just a little bit fiddly to line up because of the design. Uh, they're just it's slightly annoying. So uh, yeah, we're moving away from them now actually. Anyhow, pilot holes. Never forget to drill pilot holes. I don't like putting tape on uh, screws, I really don't. But sometimes it's just the easiest option. You said screws, you meant drill bit. Yeah. I also really don't like drilling through headstocks. I feel I'm becoming complacent with that at the moment. I haven't drilled through a headstock in years and it's only a matter of time before in my arrogance I, I do it again. That would really suck. I'm not sure what this pot is. It, it's a grease of some kind. Uh, it came to me through a batch of tools I bought for uh, uh, thevintagetool.com, my other business. And uh, But it works very well to uh, lubricate the screws. And uh, one thing you'll find is uh, not necessarily with Gota, but with other companies, they tend to use really cheap screws. And there's nothing worse than a really cheap screw because uh, it often will strip or break uh, while you're putting it in. And broken screws in headstocks are not fun. Dusty. Ah, time to fit a nut. This is bone. Now the fun begins. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I sound far too happy with that. So you'll notice when I was doing the anodizing, I put these pieces in the positions they would be in so that we had 
hopefully, uh, some figuring that goes across both, and that's just worked. It's worked perfectly. I'm, I'm really, really happy with how this uh, guitar is turning out. Um, I do have to drill some holes in here and uh, hold the plate down. I found some uh, dome-headed screws to use. Uh, this isn't as thick as a normal scratch plate. If you push it down with too much pressure, it'll bow up in between them to a certain extent. I was toying with the idea of veneering it on the back, but uh, I, I want this guitar to be together far too much, so uh, we're not gonna do that just yet. Anyway, set those aside for now. I really need to improve the vice on my main bench. It shall be done. Extra long screwdriver for no reason whatsoever. I'm not talking because I really like that sound. That's really cool. Okay. I really do not enjoy working with copper tape. Uh, however, when you're on a deadline, uh, shielding paint isn't your friend. As we found out in the 12 hour build, I think. If this goes right first time, I'm gonna be very lucky. This stuff is very annoying to work with. I just said that. So, a little bit of copper gami here, and uh, for the most part, it seems it works all right. Ish. Fiddly. Well, I never. Okay, I'm using a bit of wood there. I think it was a tool handle of some sort. Uh, to burnish it to the sides because the glue is starting to fail on this particular uh, copper tape. And the reason I cut it in one piece like that, uh, while it made it a little bit more difficult, is so that we've got one contiguous um, piece of copper. Burnish the edges over. Let's use something I don't mind denting. That means there's just less chance of me cutting myself on the edges later. There we go. Now, I know that putting in the ground wire is kind of superfluous uh, because on a telly, at least, the pickup is grounded. The bridge is grounded through the pickup and, and all of that jazz. But it really is a good thing to, to not forget about entirely. 
Yes, I suppose I need to actually do this crash plate first. I was hoping to have a, a great big reveal. There we go, some smaller dome head rather than countersunk screws, which will work better in this case. And that means I need to uh, drill three and a half mil hole. They do look better, but the uh, shank that isn't uh, threaded uh, means that it doesn't actually pull the pickup up quite as high as I would like. So uh, after the fact, we've had to go in and uh, swap those out. And that's looking good. Star-crossed lovers. What are you talking about? I literally have no idea what I'm talking about there. Tell me in the comments below if you do. This whole time I'm worrying about slipping with the screwdriver and scratching, a great big scratch across the uh, uh, <laughs> scratch plate. Ha! Ah. It wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't be ideal. I am really looking forward to seeing how this uh, ages, though. With use, it's going to, it's going to change. And uh, yeah, remember you can, if you're watching this in 2017, you have a chance to win this guitar. Right, I'm not going to screw this down until the... <laughs> I can't help... Can you hear the smile in my voice? I'm not going to screw this down until the, the neck is in place and, and all of that goodness. But... Nick, I'm gonna let's, uh, get some tape. So you'll notice that I've got <laughs> two black wires and uh, where I should have a black and a white. And uh, it's, it's literally as simple as we unexpectedly ran out of white wires and uh, Sam thought, well, Ben's a smart man. He'll look at the pickups beforehand and know which is which. And I am as far from an electrically minded person as is possible. And just assumed, eh, I'll call Sam and he'll tell me which is which. Which uh, is exactly what happened, actually. So slowly but surely, this uh, kit instrument is coming together. At this point, I'm thoroughly regretting our plans to give the instrument away uh, and desperately thinking of, of ways in which I can arrange to keep it for myself. But uh, in the end, you all won out though, so. We've skipped over a lot of the wiring because, hey, it's boring, not particularly photographic. Or tidy, for that matter. Okay. Okay, let us see. Input. Blue LED. I love that little limited edition jam jar. Oh, that's promising. That's promising. What do I hit it with? Give me something to hit it with. There we go. Let me see. Hmm. 
There we go. And we have, we have sound. Whether it sounds good or not, we don't know. <laughs> of course it sounds good. Uh, because we require strings now. Stringeth me up, baby. <laughs> oh. <laughs> or not. It's always a bit of a tight fit. Mm, speaking of which, let me actually just... Oh wait, that's a different genre. <laughs> I just, now that it's in there, I just want to make sure we have... Yep, we're good. I do love jam jar amps, they're just fantastic little beasts. <sighs> okay, well, well, um, I suppose we screw this beastie down. There we go. Okay, uh, that's in place. I'm gonna double check the neck for fit next to the scratch plate. Okay, neck in place. Scratch plate in place. And it's just a case of screwing this down. I might have to put a few more screws in, but uh, we will wait and see. So I start with just those two. Do those two first. And uh, that keeps the rest stable and uh, unmoving. Now these little screws that I found uh, came with some kits to make uh, pickups, or at least came from a pickup supplier. And uh, they are soft. And uh, if you slip slightly, it, uh, destroys the uh, the socket that your screwdriver goes into and uh, it's not ideal uh, now yeah the most important thing to do when you're using screws is to make sure you've got the exact right size screwdriver it's uh, surprising how many different sizes there are unfortunately this is coming together though I really am very, very happy with how this guitar is, is starting to look. A little bit of remedial hammering there. Uh, where I drilled through the scratch plate was uh, a little bit raised. I always try and put the Allen key facing away from the musician uh, when it's in its full on position.
just checking the how the neck lines up. I haven't put a logo on the headstock. Earlier I said I was going to, and uh, I will do at some point. But at this moment in time, I want to, uh, I want to finish the guitar and get it playing. And uh, yeah, so I've got four mil holes through the body, well, four and a half actually, but I'm using a four mil brad point to mark on the neck where the screws want to go in. Yeah, that's nice and clear. We don't supply our necks pre-drilled, or the body's pre-drilled actually, for necks, just in case you want to have a glue in set neck. And this is the final part. Uh, actually, something I'm not used to is putting a neck on at this stage of a build, because uh, most instruments I build, most instruments I build have uh, set neck or through neck construction. But uh, yeah, it's somewhat exciting. Early on in this, I was toying with the idea of going absolutely crazy, uh, bluing all of the shiny chrome hardware or as much as was possible, depending on what's made out of aluminium and not. And uh, one of the things I was considering was having this burnt finish and then filling the grain with electric blue paint and then rubbing back and there's, there's no end. There's no end to what can be done. I think I've been rather restrained actually. <laughs> uh, but you can also keep it as simple and straightforward as uh, as you like. There we go, that's what I need. So, stretch the strings out, tune her up. I am not 
going to set this up yet because uh, it's too soon for that. And because you've run out of time. I am, however, going to go and put it in an amp and see what it sounds like. Preliminarily, of course. Moment of truth. Moment? Why did I say it like that? Uh... This is not my dub properly, by the way. Obviously, stuff that needs to be done yet. I'm going to cut out. I've got some extra bits of copper that have been patinated. Yes, patinated. And uh, I'm going to cut out a sort of a BC logo thing. This isn't a crimson guitar, it's a crimson kit that's been built into a guitar. So um, there are, well, there's a difference. Um, I'm not entirely sure what it is at the moment, but there it is. Uh, it needs to be set up. The, the nut, the action of the nut is too high for uh, uh, comfortable playing and the intonation is obviously out on uh, half of it. But two days in, we've got what I'm fairly confident to say is a unique Tilly type guitar. And, uh, and I couldn't be happier. Uh, it's a combination of buying quality parts, quality pickups, a quality kit and uh, a little imagination and uh, as I was saying earlier you can go absolutely as insane as you want and uh, quite the opposite you could uh, basically want a very very standard telly that you've made yourself and uh, we are hoping at Crimson Guitars to cater for both needs and everything in between so thank you for watching this build series uh, I hope you would consider uh, purchasing one of our kits and uh, seeing for yourself just how awesome it could be and uh, I've, I've often said a, a lot of what we do at Crimson Guitars is teach people how to build we have the school uh, where people come in and build um, custom shop instruments or, or for themselves obviously and uh, with the YouTube channel we teach how to build guitars a lot and I've always said that kit guitars are the best place to start uh, you customise something, adjust, change, build, start making your own bodies and move on from that point. And uh, if I'd had that option, that's where I would have started. And uh, yeah, well, you can't go wrong. Thank you very much for watching. Click like and subscribe, support our Patreon. Or if you don't fancy supporting our Patreon, go and buy a kick guitar. Because uh, you get a kick guitar out of it. Um, I'm going to completely ignore Sean now and carry on playing and it's going to blast the audio uh, on the uh, test cam list. So, ha! Screw you, Sean. See you guys later. Bye. We do have a proper demo coming soon. Very soon.